What's up, guys? I'm sitting here with Solomon Hill. How's the offseason treating you? Good, good. Um, just been competing, staying healthy, um, and, and getting healthy. Uh, it's just good to, to finally be able to just go out there and trust my body and, and know that I, it's going to hold up. You didn't really get to play the full season last year, but now you're fully healthy. Um, what are your expectations going into next season? Um, you know, I just want to be able to be a part of, of getting to the playoffs. You know, that was I think that was huge just to watch, um, especially towards the end of the season. I didn't really want to come back and, and mess things up, especially if I wasn't 100%. I kind of felt that was selfish. But um, just to come out there and compete with my guys for a full 82 or 81, you know, and, and keep going. And um, it, it's just, it's just a, a different feeling. I've never been hurt before. You know, at Arizona, I played, you know, I think I'm top 10 in minutes, top 10 in the game started. So it's just, it's just about... Uh, just, just having that same mentality that I'm okay, that everything I do on, out there on the court, I'm, I'm, my legs are going to hold up, my hamstring is going to hold up, and, and just go out there and compete. Speaking of Arizona, who's your favorite Wildcat to play against? Um, I'd say Andre. Uh, guys that I looked up to, you know, uh, it, it used to be RJ because RJ is one of my favorite players, and, and now Andre, you know, he's. He's a guy that that, that embodies uh, what a professional is. You know, a guy that's a was an all-star could, could easily be. You know, um, any team starting three, and you know the role that he played. You know, to be able to come in, win an MVP. You know, uh, with that team and everybody that's on that team, and for him to play the role that he does and not complain about it, and and, and not you know be behind the scenes a guy that, that takes away from the team. All he does is add, and then the stuff that he does off the court as well is uh you know is admirable. So I think he, he he's a huge part of, of the competitiveness as far as like you know who I want to go out there and compete against. DeAndre Ayton, number one pick in the draft. How do you think his game is going to translate to the NBA? Um, you know, we'll we have to wait and see. You know, I don't want to put any any expectations on the young fella. You know, they're going into a situation where he's out in the West. You know, the West is, is definitely tough to deal with right now. And, um, you know, he has a young killer in Booker out there. So I think that would be huge for him to see. But, um, you know, sky's the limit for the kid. He can go out there and definitely win rookie of the year. Um, um, all depends on, you know, I just want everybody to be healthy at this point. So if he has a chance to stay healthy and, and go out there and compete, the sky's the limit for him. If you can steal one move from any NBA player, either playing or a former NBA player, whose move would you steal and why? Uh, it would be James Harden, get to the free throw line. Uh, getting to the free throw line, I think you got to – that puts you in a different league. You know, guys guard you differently. You know, they can't keep their hands on you. Uh, every time I play James, it's tough because you can't touch the guy. And it's hard to really go out here and, and, and defend somebody you can't touch. So definitely be James Harden, free throw, getting to the free throw line. Who's the most famous person on your phone? Uh, most famous person on my, in my phone? Mm -hmm. Sheesh. My mom. Yeah, I'll give it to my mom. Right. Mom Dukes, yeah, for I sure. I respect that. Yeah. What NBA player made you love the game of basketball and made you want to play in the NBA? Um, Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Because the way he, you know, it's every day. Everybody thinks it's, it's kind of easy to come out here in the league and just, you know, go out there and just score. But, you know, Michael Jordan did it on both ends of the floor. And it's every night, you know. Um, you know and it's just said... The people that he's influenced, you know, LeBron James, you look at LeBron James being number 23, you look at Kobe Bryant, you know, those, the, some of the greatest players ever, or, or Dwayne Wade, are influenced by MJ, and, and he continues to influence uh, to this day. You think he's the GOAT? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, you know what? I, I give it to LeBron, you know. Um, Thank you. Somebody said it. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect I respect what MJ did, but then I also look at what LeBron's doing um, on a nightly basis, and not just what the effect on the NBA. You know, when you grow up and you just think about playing the NBA and, well, I look at what LeBron does um, on and off the court. You know, to compete and be in the finals as many finals as he has. Yeah, he hasn't. You know, not getting a chip. But look at the team he's playing against. Golden State is probably one of the, you know the best teams probably ever assembled. Um, and then for, for what he do for for people in general. You know, I think the school school thing. Yeah, he gets you know Jalen Rose. There's other guys that really did it. But you know, he continues to keep pushing the envelope for for the ability for basketball players off the court. And, he, and that voice. Uh, lets us know that we're not just just going to go out there and just play basketball. We also have things that we care about. And we're going to we're going to put forward to.